during the entire history of the sport there have been transfers and matches that were so close to happening but due to one reason or another never came to life. Whether it was two goats setting up in different clubs, career changing goals or average clubs becoming the best in the world, these 10 moments that I'm about to show you could have rewritten the entire history of the sport. So without further ado, let's mess with the timeline. Starting out at number 10 with Manchester United never playing Sporting in 2003. In August 2003, Man United played a friendly match against Sporting to open their new stadium for the Euros. In the home team, there was a young talented winger by the name of Cristiano Ronaldo who played so well during that match that he immediately earned a move to Old Trafford. But what if that game never happened? After all, the Man United players were already extremely tired from their North American preseason tour and it's not uncommon at all for preseason friendlies to be cancelled. So, if Ronaldo never had the opportunity to shine against Man United, since Sir Alex Ferguson's number one rule regarding transfers is that he never buys a player without watching him live. Besides, Arsenal were already in talks with the players, so CR7 would have probably moved to North London. If that deal happened, I still believe Cristiano would have reached the same heights. Arsene Wenger was as capable as Fergie of molding young Ronaldo into a star and seeing Ronaldo partnering up with players like Bergkamp, Henry and Van Persie would have been wonderful. Plus, Arsenal would have won more Premier League titles after that invincible season in 2004 and that 2006 Champions League final could have gone the Gunners way. And I know that what I'm about to say is already stretching reality a bit too much, but if Messi also played in that final, we would have witnessed a Messi vs Ronaldo Champions League final, something that never happened in real life. Number 9. Alan joins Man United Back in 2020, Manchester United were on the verge of signing Alan, who was tearing it apart in Austria. The only thing that stopped that deal was the fact that Alan's agent wanted to include a release clause in the contract, something that the Red Devils didn't accept. Borussia on the other hand were okay with the conditions, snatched a young striker for 21 million euros and the rest is history. But what if he accepted Man United's offer? Well, to be honest, I don't think Alan would have revolutionized the club. I honestly believe he would have made a great partnership with Bruno Fernandes, who was also joining the club at the same time, but it would be an exaggeration to think that Manchester United would be the ones winning the treble right now. Man City would still be world class with a player like Gary Kane or Ozzyman in the ranks and Man United would be in a better place, which isn't that hard to be fair, but I just can't see them being the best team in England, let alone in the world. This scenario doesn't impact their defense, which would continue to be pretty mediocre and the most important thing is that they would still have Solskjaer as coach. I know we're messing up with timelines, but I just can't visualize Zoli winning the Premier League. Number 8. Abramovic buys Tottenham instead of Chelsea In 2003, Sven Goran Eriksson received a phone call from Abramovic's right-hand man asking for advice on whether to buy Chelsea or Spurs. Eriksson ultimately told him to buy Chelsea since he would have to replace only half of the team. But what if he told them the opposite? Or what if there wasn't even a phone call? Spurs wouldn't have achieved so much as fast as Chelsea did because the rebuild would have been much larger, but they would for sure win more silverware than that Soli Cup win in 2008. Maureen would have joined 15 years earlier and Robbie Keane and Lady King would have been his John Terry Frank Lampard duo. Players like Ricardo Carvalho, Drogba and Czech would be adored in North London and who knows, we might have watched Spurs win in the Champions League. Chelsea, on the other hand, wouldn't have reached the same heights as they did under the Abramovich ownership. Sure, they would still buy a couple FA Cups here and there, maybe an Europa League too, but you could forget winning any Premier League or Champions League trophies. Number 7. Messi signs with Inter in 2006 After quickly rising through the ranks with Barca, Messi obviously had every big team in the world interested in his services. But one team stepped up and actually submitted a 250 million euro offer for the future GOAT. Barcelona's president Juan Laporta managed to convince Messi to stay, but what if he left? For starters, Barcelona wouldn't have won the Champions League in 2009 and 2011 and although Guardiola could have still implemented Tiki Taka, they would lack that difference maker in Messi. As a consequence, Real Madrid's superiority in the Champions League would have extended to La Liga and it's very possible that the Spanish League would have turned into a farmer's competition. On the other hand, Inter would have a gem in their hands and their dominating period during the 2000s could have extended even further. I don't know if Messi would have evolved into the same legendary player, but it would be fun seeing him link up with Figo and Prime Adriano. Besides, Mourinho coaching Messi, can you imagine that? Number 6. Leicester City s*** scandal Ok, this one deserves an entire video for it, but I promise I'll keep it short. The entire Leicester squad went on a preseason tour to Thailand just before the title winning season. 
At the time, Nigel Pearson was their manager and his son had recorded himself and a few other players having a racist story. Although the coach played no part in that episode, that event led to unrest and Pearson was fired as a consequence. And who came to replace him? Claudio Ranieri, who would lead the Foxes to Premier League glory. If that disgusting moment never took place, Pearson would have kept his job and their Premier League win would have never taken place. Leicester could have easily been relegated and miss out on their future iconic European Knights and FA Cup triumph. But in the end, the story would have ended the same way, with the Foxes playing the championship in 2023. Number 5. Mourinho signs with Sporting instead of Porto There's an old episode in the Portuguese football lore that very few international fans know, but it has definitely impacted the entire history of the sport. In December 2000, Sporting Club Portugal was in shambles and a press conference was scheduled to announce Mourinho as their new coach. Mourinho at the time had just left Benfica because the new president didn't want him as their coach, despite him inspiring a weak Benfica team to a 3-0 victory over Sporting. So why wouldn't the sporting fans want the special one as their new coach? Well, simply put, this lady didn't tolerate Mourinho's celebrations days before. She found them offensive and said that the Lions should find another coach. Most supporters present felt the same and Sporting never announced him as their new manager. Mourinho would later sign with Leiria, put the small team in contention for European qualification and then left for Porto to make history. But what if that vocal lady stayed at home? What if Sporting signed Mourinho? Well, knowing the club like I do, I think they would have never given Mourinho the trust or time that he needed to make a difference. And he would be fired in a couple of months, just like several other sporting coaches from that period. That would be a huge stain in his resume, and although it wasn't his fault, he would have flopped with two Portuguese giants and never grow past the Portuguese league level. Perhaps he could still win trophies, but his reputation wouldn't be higher than a Jorge Jesus or a Carlos Queiroz. Number 4. Denis Cherishev never receives a yellow card against Barcelona. I know this makes no sense at first sight, but hear me out. Cherishev received a yellow card playing for Villarreal against Barcelona in 2015 that resulted in a one-match suspension. His team got eliminated and when he returned to Real in the next season, he played an important role in a Copa del Rey game and nowhere he still had to face the one-match ban. As a result, Real Madrid had a spell from the competition and that incident was the last straw for Rafa Benitez, who had already lost 4-0 against Barcelona. Florentino Perez appointed Zidane as his replacement and the rest is history. But what if Real followed the rules? Well, I think Benitez would have made it till the end of the season, but the 2015-2016 Champions League trophy would have gone to Atletico, who would get their revenge from the 2014 final. And maybe, just maybe, Griezmann could have won the Ballon d'Or. A new coach would be appointed in the following season, but since Madrid had time to make a choice, they would probably never appoint the youth team coach Zidane, and instead bring a promising coach from that period, such as Pochettino. With BBC on their prime, it would be hard not to win a Champions League trophy, but the impressive three-peat would have never happened. Number 3. Emiliano Sala never makes the move to Cardiff In 2019, Sala was a top-rated striker in Europe. He had been scoring a lot of goals with Nantes in Ligue 1, so it wasn't a surprise when Cardiff City came calling for him. Unfortunately, Salah would lose his life in his flight to Cardiff, and not only was the football world robbed of a star, but most importantly, his family was robbed of their beloved son. So, what if he refused the move? Well, I got a feeling that he would end up with FC Porto. He had already played under Porto's coach Sergio Conceição, and had a work rate and tactical profile that he expects in his strikers. Besides, by the end of the 18-19 season, Porto was looking to buy a new striker and Salah would be the one chosen over Taremi. He would for sure impress in Portugal and earn his dream move to the Premier League, perhaps to an even better team than Cardiff. But above all, he would still be here doing what he loved the most. May he rest in peace. Number 2. Eder isn't called up to Euro 2016 Euro 2016 will always hold a special place in the hearts of every Portuguese fan. To be fair, Portugal was extremely lucky in the way they won the Euros, even more if you consider that a striker that barely scored was the one to give them the trophy. In fact, most Portuguese fans, including myself, wanted Fernando Santos to bring the once promising André Silva instead of Eder. So, what if he did? If Portugal had Silva in their squad, he would have been more helpful than Eder in the earlier stages of the competition. A Seleção wouldn't have to rely so much on Ronaldo as a striker and they would have easily gotten past the group stage in first place. They would still fall in the easier path to the final and would face France just like they did in real life. But that powerful long-range shot would have never happened and the French would win the tournament in their home soil. Griezmann would for sure clinch a Ballon d'Or and Cristiano Ronaldo would have a slightly less impressive resume. Number 1. Portugal and Argentina face off in the World Cup final 
But here's the twist, six years later Ronaldo has a chance to rewrite the history. Let's imagine Fernando Santos started CR7 instead of Gonzalo Ramos against Morocco in the last World Cup. Although CR7 is no longer in his prime, he should have been the one to start over Ramos because he's still much stronger in aerial duels and more opportunistic than the young Portuguese striker. If there was ever a game in which Portugal would benefit from playing for Ronaldo, it would definitely be this one, as Morocco spent the entire match parking the bus and the only times where the Moroccans trembled were after Ronaldo was subbed in. So let's imagine that Portugal won this match and then, somehow, eliminated France. We would all have the greatest dream match of all time, the definitive end of the best player rivalry ever in the grandest stage possible. Portugal versus Argentina, Ronaldo versus Messi for their first World Cup win and most likely for greatest of all time status. That match would stop the entire planet with both national teams trying not only to win it for their country but also for their captains. In the end, as much as it hurts for a Portuguese to admit, I believe Argentina would still win. The Portuguese national team isn't nearly as united as the Argentinian as there are a lot of big egos in that locker room. From a footballing point of view, the match would not live up to the hype and I bet that it would be a one goal affair, but it would undoubtedly go down in history as the most watched game of all time. But what do you think? Who would win this match? Portugal or Argentina? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to leave a like if you want to watch more content like this. And also subscribe to Throne FC for the most interesting football discussions, stories and news. Thank you for watching till the end, I appreciate you and I will see you soon.